Welcome back, y'all, to, I think this is day four being here, day three at hunting camp. I'm going to throw a shirt on so you don't have to look at my exhausted body. That's the thing. I am, I'm totally exhausted. I just took a nap, and, uh, y'all, this is rough. This is really rough rough physically it's rough mentally there's bow hunting for elk public land nothing around like the most remote place I've ever been besides New Zealand probably I've hunted the, the evening after I set up camp I hunted uh, the morning uh, the next day I went fishing and then I hunted a full day. That's two and a half days. So I hunted a half day this morning. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> if you could tell, I'm exhausted. I think what's even harder than hunting these elk is, is filming the whole thing. Like self-filming this hunt and try to capture everything on camera. It's, it's really impossible. I got so lucky the first day I went out uh, and I was able to hear elk. Uh, or see elk and then hear bugles and get out. I had time to get out my camera and film those I really think I've been hunting that same group of elk this whole time. There's that one big bull and a bunch of cows and uh, a couple of spikes in the group and Just the way I've I've looked at their trails. I've literally just like analyzing poop every day and tracks and Around watering spots like I have walked the same ridge these miles of ridges um, for days now by the time you see them there's no time to to get out a camera uh, and really get you know film anything and most of the time they're they're busting me before I even see them I'll get like a glance of a leg or you know just just like and some antlers moving if I'm lucky enough to see the bull you know I'll start to move around and then all of a sudden like there's there's one cow or something over here that spotted me already and they take off it's it's just so impossible it seems to sneak up on them uh, and even more impossible to get it get them on camera at least with a big camera so my strategy is just take take a GoPro on my head and when it happens just turn it on and and shoot I think that's my only chance to to get any real uh, elk on camera footage besides seeing them from far away. The purpose of me coming up here is to really learn about elk hunting and immerse myself in it uh, by myself and, and learn through failures. Uh, that's how I've learned everything in my life. Like the best way is to just go out there and experience it. Time, time on the water, time in the woods. Uh, and then you learn from those failures and I've had some help from some buddies on you know general information and general areas but I'm learning and I'm, I'm learning a lot every day so I'm totally exhausted after this morning I was just like mentally done I called this bull down and um, I heard him bugle early in the morning I went to an area where I busted him last evening and I figured there'd be something there and as soon as I got up to the same elevation where they're hanging at I gave a call heard a bugle and he started working his way down uh, I couldn't see him but I could hear him getting a little closer and then uh, and then I saw his antlers and it was uh, in an avalanche shoot um, and I could see him about a hundred yards away and I started to get into position to make a shot and uh, there were some elks or some cows up on this ridge that were his cows I guess and one of them saw me and busted and then he just kind of disappeared I don't know where he went and they're just like ghosts I don't know how when you hear them run through the woods it sounds like a herd of cattle coming through there and breaking branches and just and you can the sign of an elk versus the sign of a whitetail like all of their poop and tracks and uh, even just moving through the woods it's so easy to see but it, they're silent it seems or I guess they're just sitting still every time I'm walking through there and they bust me so oh gosh like 
I came up here just to learn. Like, I didn't really have that big of expectations to get on elk, much less uh, a big bull, like a shooter bull. But now I've seen this bull for um, every day I've been here, and I'd love to make it happen. I'd, I'd love to just get anything. It would be a monster accomplishment. What I think is the plan, what I think my best chance is to stay up there with them. So um, instead of exhausting myself going up and down the mountain, I think this evening I'm going to take my pack out tent. Um, I'm going to build my pack up a little heavier, bring a couple of meals and my cook kit. And I've had, I've had some problems with the cold. It's been colder here than I thought. And I'm so much more dehydrated up here than... Uh, what I'm used to. I just cooked me some breakfast, had had some eggs and ham and potatoes, but I've basically been eating the same thing every day. I've got uh, I've got a few fish left. So my resources are running down, but I just kind of want to give you a tour of the the pad here. Four days in, show, show you what it looks like. It's kind of like a hunting bachelor pad, and it's a reflection of my mental exhaustion right now. My tent is, it's huge and it's so comfortable and I don't want to leave it. I really don't want to take my little tent and stay up there on the mountain. I think it's going to be even colder, but it's been cold here. I've been sleeping in this, this is a Sierra Designs sleeping bag. It's a 20 degree bag. And uh, the key is this sleeping pad right here, this extra huge sleeping pad I got that's made by Teton I think yeah it's uh, extra large and I got the cot to match it and it's I mean I, I can sleep as good on that as I can at home over here is our is our laundry center I got my dirty clothes in here hanging up um, this is just kind of a total wreck situation I've been I've been trying to charge things but I'm running low on batteries and this thing uh, that one of you guys sent me it's been pretty cool but it's dying now so I'm trying to charge these GoPro batteries get them going I'm almost out I've kind of kept a lot of clothes and food and just general stuff in this this big bag here I don't have my puffy pants I wish I did but I've also been using these these bass mafia bags just to organize different stuff like this is toiletry medical stuff Foods. Only brought two pairs of pants, so I'm just alternating those, letting one dry, and using the other. And then uh, that's my pack. It's been pretty light, but this is what I've been carrying. Uh, some extra clothes, rain gear. It's been raining every day, and my lenses and camera stuff. And then obviously like knives, flashlights. Yeah, it looks like an absolute wreck in here, because that's what I am right now. But I love this bag. I love you. I don't want to leave you. Let's step outside the house here. Oh, this place is covered with flies and mosquitoes. I've really been having to uh, make sure I close that so I don't get flies in here. Got another storm brewing off in the distance. It's about that time of day. The truck, it's covered in dust. I've got one cooler here. And this is what I've kept my kept my fish in. I've got eggs, um, you know, different stuff in. There's my fish I have left, so I'm gonna eat those before I head up on the mountain for the the big time journey. Here's my bow, it's hanging up right there. Um, I'm really having to make sure I don't bang. I'm carrying this. I'm not. It's not strapped to my back, so it's a lot of work having your pack and then just literally carrying your bow in your hand step back out out here this is my my hangout pad this is where I come and I just look at nature get the fire going and uh, sit in my little seat right there and just kind of check out the uh, the scenery and then I've got my other cooler it's kind of running low on ice but I got other stuff in there milk vegetables whatnot still got my fly rod ready to dangle if I need to right here I got my water filtration system I just take this hose, pull it out of here, and I can kind of wash off whatever. I've taken one bath since I've been here. It was kind of like a half bath situation, and it was down there in that river, which is coming from the ice off the mountains. 
and that really sucked. Um, that was one of the quickest little baths I've ever had. The first couple days, I really just enjoyed setting up camp, uh, fishing, dabbling and scouting and stuff like that. And now mentally, like I'm just, I'm, I'm here for the elk. It's gotten me. Like when I've heard those first bugles, it was like, this is next level right here, next level hunting. And because it's such a big challenge, I just want to do it. It would be an incredible accomplishment. And that's my focus right now. I might need to go catch a few more fish, but if I'm heading up into the mountains, it's pretty much just going to be mountain house meals and hopefully we can stay warm. So, oh, I'm going to rest a little bit more, eat up, and then we're heading up there for good. And you're coming with me. Backlight, please. It's going to be a doozy. Still raining, a little bit of hail. It's time to head out. Spend my next around 16, 18 hours on the mountain. Bags packed, prepared. Um, I've got the equivalent of four bottled waters in there. Um, I've got food. I have basically everything I need to sleep. I'm leaving the big bed behind. Gonna miss you, baby. I'm hoping that this is gonna be worth worth it. Maybe not. I might just freeze my butt off on a mountain tonight, but we'll see. But this uh, this camera I'm taking that I'm filming on right now, it's a little bulky, but it's a much smaller lens. I'm not taking my big lens. I'm just going for an arrow through an elk, and that is my focus. So I'm not going to be filming a whole bunch, but I do have to put you guys away now because it's going to be wet. So you're going in the pack. All right, and I'll see you on top of the mountain. sleeping bag, a thermo sleeping pad, <clears throat> and I've got a pillow. There's my gear right here. So this is where I'm sleeping tonight. I'm gonna leave all my gear inside of here, mark on my GPS, and then uh, I'm just taking my bow, maybe a little bit of water, and just hunting until it gets dark. So let's hope something happens.
Our old friend, Beef Stroganoff. I had, I had him. I had him. I had the herd. Biggest herd that I've seen uh, so far. Uh, I was chasing out a couple of cows, and they knew something was up. Like, they knew they were being chased, and one made a sound. I'd never heard that before. I mean, whitetail kind of snort. This is like a bellow. It's loud. It rushed up this um spot where i had literally sat for an hour the other day hoping something would come nothing did they went right through there and then i was sitting there and then i heard something crashing behind me i looked back and there's a giant herd of elk like 20 elk coming up uh the spot so i had to rush into position and uh they were a little farther 120 yards obviously not you know the bow distance so i had to rush up the mountain again uh, but when i did that with the sun going down, the air cooling down, um, they could smell me and they knew something was up and I kept kind of like peeking around and they just, they were blowing and snorting and they knew I was there. Um, so I never could, uh, they were close, like they were 50 yards away. I could have got a shot, but I couldn't stand up to draw. And when I just peeked my head out, they took off, you know, and then at the very end of the day, I heard some awesome bugles. And I'm staying up here with them, like I'm I'm here. Uh, there's also bears here, um, so we're gonna put the stroganoff up pretty tight. And also, um, I had to move my camp. Actually, I'll show you guys on the next episode. I'm in a deadfall area, like a bunch of trees that are falling down. I heard one fall while I was sleeping at my base camp the other night. It is scary how loud it is, and it can kill you. Like these big trees, or I don't know why they fall down so much, but they fall down a lot. And I'm in the middle of a bunch of deadfall trees. And there was one that was like ready to go where I set up camp. So um, you always got to check that when you're setting up your camp. I should be okay. I came one step closer today, guys. I'm going <laughs> to enjoy my beef stroganoff over here. Enjoy my little tent for the night. It's definitely not as good as my other one, but all this for these elk. I'm close, guys. Hopefully it happens tomorrow. Stay tuned. Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I'll see y'all there later.